Hi, this is Robert Bolaños. In this video, I'm going to be talking about uh, the new version of uh, Task Spice, which is version 10.17. And I'm going to be talking about some of the features they, that uh, they've implemented. Now, one of the features that I use a lot, being a power engineer, is the ability to do a FRA using the transient analysis which would very which would be very similar to using a Bode 100 uh, where we uh, measure the loop and so likewise you can do basically the same thing using uh, top slice okay so a better way of showing this or showing the capabilities or how to set up a FRA I'm gonna go show an example here I show a Royer high voltage power supply this power supply has a oscillator it's uh, using uh, negative feedback from uh, from the transformer and it's driving the basis and you have a current source that drives these two uh, transistors and driving the current source is your feedback circuit so basically uh, the output of the flyback or the uh, the transformer is right here and it goes through a Cockcroft Walton Walton multiplier it's a seven stage and it develops a negative uh, 2000 volts here and then you have a dropping resistor which is 400 meg ohms and it goes to this circuit which is a scaling circuit and from this circuit then it feeds to the error amp so let me go ahead I can label this as error amp is the error amp and in between the error amp and the scaling circuit you can install a injection point and in this case what I did is a I put a voltage source and to properly define it it has to be a sine wave and to initialize it you initialize the offset voltage at zero and in this case I put a amplitude value of 2 milli ohm, uh, millivolts and a frequency of 100. Now this is not, uh, it's required to put something in there but we're, but the frequency is going to be changing as well as the amplitude so you'll see in a little bit as uh, how this is implemented but in the meantime you fill this in and you basically just fill in with uh, reasonable numbers and then the other thing is you want to make sure that you name the reference with something that you can remember. So in this case, I'm gonna I typically uh, name this voltage as voltage or V F R A. That way, uh, I know that this is going to be my F R A frequency response analysis uh, stimulus. So once I have that, th what it does is it uh, it sends a signal and it measures or you put two probes on either side of the of the signal source and the simulator will then calculate the amplitude differences between the two nodes and the phase difference and as long as you have that or can extract that two information you can come up with a loop response or a body plot. Now what I did is at this point I added a little voltage source with a scale of one and basically I put a capacitor basically to remove the DC voltage at this two points so this is basically AC couple and I have large 
capacitors that way it ensures that I can measure all the way to uh, 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 1 uh, Hertz once you have that you go to the transient analysis and you do your normal time step now one of the things that I've noticed is if you do a time step around anywhere from uh, or the step ceiling from uh, 300 nano to maybe 100 nano you get a pretty good representation so I'm gonna go ahead and maybe decrease this to 200 just so I have enough resolution and then you want to set up the FRA and it has this little menu you can en enable it and you get this menu this is a FRA setup and here you type in your voltage source the name of the voltage source which is VFRA and then you can do either a linear or a decade or you can do a table and then what you can do is you can put the frequency and then a comma and then the amplitude that you want uh, want so you can do specific frequencies and voltage plots but the easiest would be the decade once you press on the decade you can start at 100 Hertz and in this case I'm going to stop at uh, 50 kilohertz and you can define or tell it how many points per decade uh, how many te uh, frequencies uh, points you're going to want and then what's neat and this is what one of the things that they implemented is when you do use a FRA such as the Bode 100 or other FRAs uh, they have a feature where as you sweep the frequency you can also sweep uh, the amplitude voltage so in this case this little uh, table you can put the frequency up to 100 so basically below 100 to 100 the amplitude will be 5 millivolts and then from 100 to uh, 1k it interpolates linearly between 5 milli and 2 milli and then any frequency above that is going to be 2 milli millivolts so this gives you a chance or an opportunity or the capability of changing the amplitude now typically at low frequencies you want higher voltage and then at the crossover you want a low lower lower voltages and then as you go above the crossover then you want a little bit higher frequencies so in this case I'm just using two two frequency plots and that's that's all I need then this is the time uh, time steady state uh, typically you run a first simulation and you see at what uh, time uh, time uh, it reaches steady state in this case the simulation reaches steady state at about uh, 10 milliseconds and then the maximum time rise I typically add 10 uh, actually in this case I did 15 you can add 10 to 15 let's go ahead and add 10 to the 10 so it'd be 20 and the number of periods that if, if you don't fill this out this is 5 and type step is 200 and then the other thing that you want to do is you want to uh, define your nodes this is going to be out and in that's where it's going to analyze and measure the amplitude and the phase and then you this is your scaling so once you have all of that then it it's very easy to press run and it should take about a minute or so a little bit over a minute now another feature that they did is on the first run it simulates from zero and then on the subsequent it will start at 10 which is the steady state so instead of restarting at zero, it starts at uh, where it reaches steady state. So that saves a huge amount of uh, simulation time, and it speeds up your simulation.
Okay, and you'll notice that it'll, as the frequency increases, this will get shorter and it'll start signaling faster until it and there you have it okay so here is the body plot we can go ahead and let's say limit to let's say 100k and you can make your measurements as far as uh, the crossover and the face and so forth okay the other feature that I want to show is you in this case when you do a FRA you, if you run since it's running multiple uh, frequency sweeps the data that it collects if you hit everything will be huge and to speed up the simulation and keep the uh, the file that it generates uh, small I typically click on listed variable and any uh, auto plot statements uh, will be saved in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and save everything which means that it saves the voltages currents of the circuit and the sub circuit as well so it will not it should not let me unclick or disable the FRA so I can disable the FRA okay then I'm going to pr press run so now it's doing the simulation and the current and the voltage of every component is saved and you can actually probe the schematic just like you do with uh, LT Spice you're able to do this uh, the same basically so if you're coming or have a background using LT Spice then uh, this will be very familiar uh, originally I wasn't used to probing uh, the schematic I typically would um, use the pound auto plot and just display the signals that I want wanted but since I've been using the probe has been very very uh, convenient so let's go ahead and see how much we have okay okay so okay so let me redo this actually and this is I'm going to go ahead and limit this to 25 and this is the data so I wanted to display data from from the initial okay. and this is the HV so these are the three that it's going to auto plot so let me change this to HV out <coughs> okay let's rerun the simulation Now typically on these types of uh, multipliers the simulation takes a long time because the uh, it's basically like a charge pump so it's like a bucket one charges the other and so forth and the voltage is divided between 
these capacitors equally. So usually the simulation on these take a long time, but Tosfrys runs this in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, I've used LT Spice for this, and usually it takes several minutes to simulate. So we're around a minute, 12, and it should show the voltage rising from zero going to negative 2,000 volts. Okay, so there you go. As a matter of fact, I could have uh, saved quite a bit of time. So here you can see where it's uh, simulating and then it settles at 2.4 uh, kb. This is the error amp, and this is the difference between this is the signal that is uh, injected. Now, what I wanted to show is not this, but now you can go ahead, press probe, and you can either do all data, voltages, or currents. And I'm going to go ahead and do single trace. So now I can probe and then I can zoom in if I wish. Take a look at the waveforms. Should be like a little sine wave. And it is. I can probe the output. I can do multiple probe and so forth. I can also probe current. Here's the current. So this is a pretty neat capability. Here's the error ramp. Once you have the error ramp, you can move a cut and go to the third. And now you can have different planes and you can see different voltages and currents and so forth. So this is really neat. This is very similar to using LT Spice. So those are the things uh, that they've implemented, and uh, I think it enhances uh, the simulation experience. I think it makes uh, simulating much, much easier. Okay, well, that's all for now. If you have any questions about Tusk Spice, uh, some of the features, or the FRA, uh, you can uh, email me, and I'll uh, try to respond as soon as possible. Thank you for watching.